General Erwin Rommel became very popular after his victorious campaigns in France. The cancellation of Operation Sea Lion, whose aim was to invade the British Isles, caused Rommel to be transitioned to a new command on the Russian front during Operation Barbarossa. However, fate led the general to fight in a very different setting to the Russian steppes. In North Africa, Mussolini ordered an offensive on the British-dominated territories. However, the Italian operation was a debacle, and the Italian domains in Africa were threatened. In a gesture of goodwill towards its Italian allies, Germany sent an expeditionary force to Africa to support the Italian army. This force became known as the Africa Corps. Rommel commanded these men with the express order to support only the maintenance of Italian lines and positions. But Erwin Rommel was not satisfied with an insignificant role in the most important conflict in history. Rommel initiated offensive operations using the Blitzkrieg doctrine on the African war scene, achieving considerable territorial gains. In 1942, the Africa Corps was reinforced with new equipment and many supplies, Rommel felt he could defeat the British even with a much smaller army. His first major objective was Tobruk, an important and fortified Libyan city which protected an important port in North Africa. Conquering this port was essential to supply the advancing German forces heading towards British Egypt. In cooperation with the Italians, Rommel led a surprise attack on the fortress of Tobruk. But the surprise effect on the operation was lost, as the British had identified the cryptography that the Germans used in their communications. However, the Allied troops did not expect the boldness and adaptability of the German general. Rommel surrounded Tobruk. After days of arduous battles, the general and his panzer division, with just over 100 tanks, destroyed more than 200 enemy armored cars. However, much of the credit for the victories over the British armored cars was not due to the German tank crews, but to the operators of the Flak 88, a German 88mm anti-aircraft cannon that Rommel used in an alternative form as an anti-tank weapon. Due to the few obstacles in the African desert, the 88 cannon could be used to hit enemy armored personnel up to one kilometer. The weapon's accuracy knocked out enemy tanks with a single shot. On June the 21st, 1942, the fortress of Tobruk would surrender, and Rommel would take more than 30,000 prisoners of war and capture tons of equipment and supplies. This victory was a blow to the morale of the British people, as the enemy was outnumbered and had few resources and supplies. The news of Rommel's major victory had a great impact to Germany and the world. Hitler promoted him to marshal the German army. On hearing the promotion, Rommel is reported to have said that he would have preferred to have received one more division. Erwin Rommel was at the peak of his military career. His face filled the cover of magazines around the world, becoming globally known as the Desert Fox. But Rommel was intent on increasing his conquests and reaching the Suez Canal, stifling the British maritime trade that supplied the Crown's domains. In England, Winston Churchill was furious at the British defeat and said this phrase, defeat is one thing, disgrace is another. He changed the commander of the British army in Egypt, handing the leadership to General Montgomery. The German army advanced towards Egypt to fight in the most decisive battle of the African theater of the war, the Battle of El Alamein. Rommel had won a huge victory at Tobruk, so the British army was disorganized and dismayed. The Desert Fox knew he was racing against time, as his supply lines were strangled. With that, he would grow weaker day by day, while the British received more and more reinforcements. Near the town of El Alamein, Axis and Allied forces would collide. Rommel's troops were blocked by a powerful artillery barrage. Fake tanks were even used to deceive and confuse the Germans. The strength of the Allied army was far superior to the opponent, Allied victory seemed a matter of time. The resistance of the German lines was remarkable. However, the lack of supplies limited the Germans' reaction. Finally, the German lines gave way in what was the beginning of the end of the Africa Corps. Rommel, used to only victories, began to feel the bitter taste of defeat. Hitler ordered Rommel to hold his ground, fighting to the death alongside his men. But Rommel did not condemn his brothers-in-arms to a senseless death. 
he disobeyed Hitler's orders and ordered a retreat. The way Rommel commanded the strategic withdrawal on his way to Tunisia is considered a great military achievement. Even though he was heavily attacked by the RAF and almost without supplies, he prevented his army from being surrounded and destroyed. On reaching Tripoli, Rommel was reinforced by the 5th Panzer Army, which had modern tanks, including the remarkable Tiger. Rommel thought that everything would have been different if those reinforcements had been at El Alamein. The German troops were in a very complex situation. In the east, the British were advancing against them. In the west, American troops had just landed. The African campaign was decided. The Axis forces were postponing the inevitable, but Rommel still managed one last victory before the Allies. At Kasserine Pass, 30,000 American troops meant 22,000 Axis soldiers, but the American soldiers were inexperienced and were fighting against men who had been battling incessantly on those lands for over a year. It was a massacre. Over 10,000 Americans died that day, and only 2,000 Germans perished. But the Africa Corps could not resist the British advances. Rommel was recalled to Berlin as his men surrendered to the Allied forces. For defeating the Desert Fox, Montgomery received a noble title, becoming Viscount of El Alamein. In 1943, Rommel was chosen to oversee the defenses of Western Europe against an imminent Allied amphibious assault. These defenses became known as the Atlantic Wall. In assessing much of these defenses, Rommel found them ineffective and obsolete, particularly in Normandy, which he considered to be the most likely target of a major amphibious invasion. However, the German high command believed that the attack would take place in Calais. Therefore, most of the resources were placed in that region. Even so, Rommel did his best to reinforce the defenses of Normandy, preparing the reserve troops to act quickly in case of an invasion in this region. However, the Germans were not prepared to repel the gigantic force that invaded the beaches of Normandy on the famous D-Day. Even without enough men and resources, the German army inflicted a high number of casualties on the Allies in an attempt to repel the British, Canadian, and American advances. Rommel began to question Hitler's leadership, and members of the Nazi party started to regard him as a traitor and defeatist. He was seriously wounded when his car was attacked by an Allied fighter jet. During his hospitalization, the attack against Hitler's life and an attempted coup known as Operation Valkyrie occurred. Due to his personal connection with some conspirators, Rommel was accused of participating in the coup. But being a national hero, he was given two options. Either he would accept the trial and death sentence, with his family also suffering reprisals, or he could commit suicide and all the charges would be covered. Rommel chose to take his own life by taking poison. On October the 18th, 1944, the funeral of one of the greatest generals of the German army took place. He was celebrated by the people, receiving all the military honors due to a national hero of Nazi Germany. Although he had a career with brilliant moments, it is important to remember that Rommel should not be admired beyond his military skills. Until near the end of the war, he was a fervent Nazi, a deep admirer of Hitler, and an anti-Semite.